bringing up breaking news out of Brooklyn, New York. The federal courthouse there where a uh, federal judge has sentenced R. Kelly, the R&B singer, to 30 years in federal prison for sex crimes involving his young fans. Uh, I said before, you know, this involved uh, female fans, but we also heard uh, some testimony during the trial uh, from a male accuser accusing uh, R. Kelly of some sex crimes as well. So uh, I'm seeing on social media, it's lighting up about this. Uh, Twitter is lighting up on this. I tweeted it out. Uh, people are celebrating this uh, sentence um, on one hand. On the other hand, I've seen some tweets uh, from people basically saying uh, they're upset, they support R. Kelly, and they don't think that he's guilty. Uh, so we need to be mindful of that. He has his supporters and people uh, who believe the allegations of the victims in this case, the accusers. And also, um, you know, they believe in the verdict uh, that he was found guilty. So um, we are awaiting a press conference from the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York. We're going to break in and bring that to you as soon as it begins. No, he's not. No, he's not a predator. Anybody, 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 anything goes. Where's the other members of the Enterprise? Jennifer Bonjean, B-O-N-J-E-A-N. Are you, Jennifer, are you how, saying this is sexual I'm abuse? I'm sorry? What did you say to you after no, the sentence? Uh, he was, we just went over some of the um, terms of, that the judge was reading to him. We were, actually didn't have a lot of time. But he, uh, again, he was prepared for it. Okay. We thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. On behalf of our Kelly supporters, thank you. we do support you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you for all your hard work. Thank you. Waiting on the appeal to come. Hi, everybody. The U.S. Attorney is going to come out now. I'll give you their names. Uh, there's going to be uh, two speakers. They're not going to take any questions because of the appeal. So we're going to hear first from the U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Breon Peace, B-R-E-O-N. Last name is Peace, P-E-A-C-E. -E. Okay, and then he's going to be followed by... Steve Francis, F R A N C I S. I'm sorry, what's his first name? Steve, uh, Executive Associate Director, Homeland Se United States Homeland Security. <laughs> Correct. United States Home Department of Homeland Security. Thank you. He'll be the second speaker. Okay, so first the U.S. Attorney Breon Peace, then Steve Francis, Homeland Security. Okay. How long is he going to speak for? I think the two of them will be done in five minutes, six minutes, something like this. Mr. Martin, will the victims come immediately after? I don't think so. I don't think I don't I don't I am not aware of the victims coming out any victims coming out here to speak. Gloria Allred. Gloria Allred is going to be addressed. But a press conference, yes. Okay, so just stand by, they're in the lobby, I'm gonna come out and get them now. Thank you so much. We're ready. Yes, I saw that. That's what we're gonna see immediately uh, U.S. Attorney coming in to stand up your press conference with some of the victims in Gloria Hallward. So <laughs> No, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Moments ago, R. Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison. This is a significant outcome for all victims of R. Kelly, and especially for the survivors who so bravely testified about the horrific and sadistic abuse they endured. R. Kelly is a predator, and as a result of our prosecution, 
he'll serve a long jail sentence for his crimes. With the aid of his fame, his money, and most importantly, his inner circle, R. Kelly preyed upon children and young women for his own sexual gratification for decades. He used coercive control, exemplified by a pattern of isolation, rules, dependence, threats, intimidation tactics, physical abuse, and at least once the presence of a gun to force victims, including minors, to engage in sexual activity with him and others and to become unwilling participants in the pornographic films he wrote, produced, and directed. He continued committing his crimes for almost 30 years and avoided punishment until today. Today, the sentence shows that the witnesses reclaim control over their lives and over their futures. These are voices of mostly black and brown women and children that were heard and believed and for whom justice was finally achieved. This is a victory for them, for justice, and for future survivors of sexual assault. Victims of sexual violence must be heard, perpetrators must be held accountable, and our women and children must be protected. I hope this sentencing serves as its own testimony that it doesn't matter how powerful, rich, or famous your abuser may be, or how small they may make you feel, justice only hears the truth. I want to say that this case would not have been possible without the outstanding work, dedication, and skill of the prosecution team, Assistant United States Attorneys Elizabeth Geddes, Nadia Shahada, and Maria Cruz Melendez, Senior Investigator Keith Kolovich, and former paralegal specialist Kira Winthon and Alyssa Fagel. Their dedication to the truth and justice was truly extraordinary. I want to commend and thank the special agents who handled this case for their outstanding work, Ryan Chabot and Sylvette Reynoso of the Department of Homeland Security, Homeland Security Investigations, under the supervision of Supervisory Special Agents Elvin Hernandez and Patrick Gill. They and detectives from the New York City Police Department painstakingly went through the documents, the records, and interviews to collect and verify the facts that became the foundation for this strong case. And finally, and I want to emphasize this, I want to say a special thank you to the brave survivors those who came forward and all who endured. It is thanks to you that we were able to deliver justice today. I'll now call up HSI's Executive Associate Director, Steve Francis, for remarks. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Steve Francis, the Executive Associate Director for Homeland Security Investigations, HSI. Robert Kelly once said, if you're gonna tell your life story, you got to be honest or don't do it. Over the course of this HSI-led multi-year investigation and six-week trial, a jury of Mr. Kelly's peers confirmed what these courageous victims have known for a very long time. Mr. Kelly is not an honest person. This man is a prolific serial predator who utilized his status as a Grammy award-winning household name with global recognition to inflict pain and anguish on so many victims. Despite numerous reports of his destructive abuse over the years, the brazen acts of intimidation against his accusers kept him shielded from prosecution until HSI, the U.S. Attorney's Office from the Eastern District of New York and these incredible prosecutors and NYPD initiated an investigation into his criminal organization. Today's sentence is a victory that belongs to the brave victims who came forward. Despite intense public scrutiny, Despite social media slander, despite threats to their own health and safety, and despite be, being asked to relive the pain of some of the most traumatic days in their lives, they told their stories and they made their voices heard. Today's sentencing sends a clear message that no amount of money or fame is enough to evade justice. And the money, power, and fame will not buy you immunity in the United States. 
and the United States government will hold you accountable for any atrocities you commit. Mr. Kelly led a criminal enterprise with his entourage to prey on the young and vulnerable by dangling promises of fame, fortune, and stardom. By the time his victims saw through the empty promises, it was too late. Mr. Kelly attempted to silence these victims through bribery, intimidation, blackmail, and physical violence. He once sang that sometimes the silence can be so loud. Thankfully, these brave victims and true survivors will be heard forever, while Mr. R. Kelly will be left alone in a jail cell in silence for many, many years to come. It is com comforting to now know that not only the loud noise he heard will hear every day is his prison cell door slamming shut behind him. No matter how many hit songs he may have released, his legacy will, be rem not, will not be remembered by that of his voice, but by the voices of the brave women and men who came forward, forward to reveal to the world the monster that R. Kelly truly is. Mr. K Kelly underestimated the bravery and resilience of those he once preyed upon when they were young and vulnerable. These victims are the unsung heroes today. Today is about them. Today is their day. Today is their victory. Thank you. What took you so long, sir? Why did you fail victims for decades, sir? Thank you, everybody. Any comments on the threats that prosecutors face? Gloria? Up here. Gloria. We're all set up here. We're all set up here. Gloria. We're all set up at the podium. Gloria. 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 Move your feet, guys, please. What is that? Just me. You can get up there. Thank you. Is this the sandal? Just for you, yes. Hey. Oh, okay. Introduce yourself, please, ma'am. There you go. Okay. Okay. Today, I'm Attorney Gloria Allred, and today R. Kelly was sentenced to prison for his many crimes against underage girls. And R. Kelly used the power of his celebrity and his music business to lure and to manipulate and to isolate and to denigrate many young girls. He was a skilled sexual predator who preyed on his victims and after grooming them, he inflicted significant emotional and sometimes physical harm on them, which in some cases will continue to hurt them for the rest of their lives. Much of the pain that they suffered because of him was evident as the victims read their victim impact statements today in court. They wanted the court to understand their pain and for the defendant to hear the harm that they've suffered as a result of the pain that he has inflicted on them. Although he had what he may have thought was a perfect scheme to sexually victimize his young victims, he underestimated their courage to fight back and assist law enforcement in making him accountable in a court of law. All of my clients, who were, by the way, the majority of the victims who testified in this case, were very courageous as they testified and were cross-examined and or spoke to law enforcement or testified before a grand jury to assist in the prosecution of R. Kelly. Together they were able to fight his power by becoming empowered young women themselves who refused to be intimidated by him and his enablers. I am proud of all of them and there are many sacrifices made in order to bring R. Kelly finally to the bar of justice. They have succeeded in making R. Kelly suffer the consequences of his criminal acts. In addition, they are relieved that he has been sent to prison for approximately 30 years because while he is in custody, he will not be able to continue to sexually victimize any other underage girls. And protecting other girls has been a major goal of theirs. And now I would like to introduce some of the brave uh, clients of mine who have spoken 
to law enforcement and have provided very important information in this case. I'm going to let them give their names themselves if they wish to provide them. Hello, everyone. My name is Lizette Martinez. And um, I just want to thank Gloria. I want to thank the prosecutors. I want to thank the judge. Um, today was a very special but hard day for us. I personally, this happened to me a long time ago. I was 17, I'm 45 today. I never thought that I would be here to see him be held accountable for the atrocious things that he did to children. I don't know what else to say except that I'm grateful. I'm grateful for today. And I'm grateful that Robert Sylvester Kelly is away, and will stay away, and will not be able to harm anyone else. Thank you. Lizette, what did he do to your life? He ruined it. Tell us how. I was an up-and-coming singer. I was a girl full of life. Um, very innocent, but very driven. And um, preyed upon, basically at the mall in Aventura, Florida, and promised just a mentorship and quickly turned into, I would just say, a sex slave. Talk about the sentence. Is 30 years enough? Do you think sentence was enough? I personally don't think it's enough, but I'm pleased with it. It's fine. No, no good. Okay. Thank you for your bravery. Thank you. 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 Good afternoon. I am Jovante. Jovante. My name is Jovante. Jovante. I started this journey 30 years ago. I was 14 years old when I encountered Robert Sylvester Kelly. There wasn't a day in my life up until this moment that I actually believed that the judicial system would come through for black and brown girls. I stand here very proud of my judicial system, very proud of my fellow survivors, and very pleased with the outcome. 30 years did he do this, and 30 years is what he got. I thank the prosecution. I thank my attorney, Gloria Aldridge. And I thank all of you all that have stood in support of us for so long. What did Why did it take the police so long? Why did it take the police so long? Are you frustrated it took so long for you to get justice? I can't speak to why it takes anyone the amount of time that it takes. But they've done their homework. They've presented their case. And now we have justice in our judicial system. Were they not listening to black women? Was there a problem around race here? Were they not listening to black women? They were not paying attention to the details that were being articulated to them. I won't say that they were not paying attention. I will say that they were not listening for detail. Javante, how did this affect your life, your, your dealings with him? Being in a situation as such affords you the ability to be re-victimized over and over again in different areas of your life. When you are taught to be quiet and to keep silent about things that should be spoken about openly, you find yourself reclused, and that often affords people the ability to manipulate you. Who forced you to be quiet? I'm sorry, sir, I didn't hear you over. I'm sorry, who forced you to be quiet? You said when you're forced to be quiet, who forced you to be quiet? Society. Society. When people are telling you that you're not telling the truth and there's no support for you. Javante, did you cry when you, when you heard the 30 years, when you heard the sentence? Did, did you sigh? Absolutely. Did, Absolutely. Javante. Absolutely. How do you feel now? Javante, last, how last do you question. Feel now? How do you feel now? Overwhelmed. Javante, how do you spell your name? Javante, Javante. Thank, Javante. thank you, sir. Can you, you spell your first name for us, Javante? Javante. Javante. Awesome. Mario, can you get us the spelling? There are some others I think. Could you spell her name, please? Gloria, could you spell Giovanni's first name?